Good morning. I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for July 31st, 2024. Well, it was announced on July 29th by the Biden administration that there will be a new arms package for Ukraine, consisting of a further $200 million drawdown of various munitions from the Pentagon stock, plus $1.5 billion more in contracting authority under the existing Ukraine uh, Security Assistance Initiative. Now, this is designed to improve the air defenses, anti-tank weapons, as well as the equipment that's already been offered by the United States. This is the 20th package of this sort, the 62nd tranche of equipment to be provided from Department of Defense inventories for Ukraine. But it's not going to change the outcome of the war in which the proxy war in Ukraine against Russia has been lost. Now, meanwhile, U.S. debt has just passed $35 trillion. But that's not enough for the military industrial financial complex. There was just a new report issued of a national defense, which calls for a massive expansion of military spending. It was released a couple days ago by a congressional committee, and it stated that the U.S. military is incapable of defending the United States and its allies against the twin threats of Russia and China. In other words, it is anticipating a continued war against Russia and Ukraine, even though there are very few Ukrainian forces left to fight, as well as launching a new confrontation with China over Taiwan. Now, they call for a massive expansion of the military-industrial complex, paid for with a huge growth in the defense budget. But they admit that the U.S. industrial economy, industrial base, is not adequate for such a buildup, so this has to be repaired. So while we lack health care, while we lack decent infrastructure, they're going to pour hundreds of billions, if not trillions more, into wars. Now, the report says, quote, the U.S. faces the most challenging global environment with the most severe ramifications since the end of the Cold War. The trends are getting worse, not better. Now, what they're talking about is global NATO an expansion of U.S. military bases and U.S. military operations throughout the world with more war. And what this means in the not-too-distant future is that there probably will be a draft reinstated in the United States where all young men and women will have to serve in the military to carry out the wars that are, that are ordered by the military-industrial-financial complex. The... Report says, quote, we propose a multi, multiple theater force construct with the joint force in conjunction, in conjunction with U.S. allies and partners sized to defend the homeland and tackle simultaneous threats in the Indo-Pacific, Europe, and the Middle East. And it says that this requires a massive expansion of the military industrial complex, quote, U.S. industrial production is grossly inadequate to provide the equipment, technology, and munitions needed today, let alone given the demands of great power conflict, unquote. So they spell it out clearly. This is the buildup of a military industrial force at the expense of the needs of the American people. And they say that there needs to be much bigger budgets for the Pentagon. Quote, Congress should pass a supplemental appropriation to begin a multi-year investment in the national security innovation and industrial base. Additionally, the report says, Congress should revoke the 2023 Fiscal Responsibility Act spending caps and provide real growth for fiscal year 2025. So at a point in which they had put caps on, they're saying those caps are no longer needed. In fact, they must be revoked because we have to spend more than we've anticipated. Now, 
think about where, where we stand in this. Losing the war in Ukraine, unprepared for a war with China, with the dollar being targeted because of the failure of the United States to respond to the needs and desires of the global South. And instead of a diplomacy, instead of negotiations, instead of working with the countries of the global South, the Congress is calling for more military buildup, more spending, and a preparation for ongoing perpetual war. This is lunacy, lunacy on steroids. Now, on top of that, look at what just happened in the last 48 hours in the Middle East. Uh, a top military advisor to Nasrullah of Hezbollah is presumed dead from an airstrike by Israel in South Beirut. Uh, Fuad Shukar, who is one of the top military commanders of Hezbollah, was the target. Uh, so far, they haven't confirmed his death, but it's fairly likely given the damage that was done to where he was in the building that was struck. And then yesterday, Ismail Haniyeh, who is the political leader of Hamas, was killed in Tehran. <clears throat> Haniyeh was the one conducting the ceasefire talks. Uh, the question now is, does this mean full-scale war? Murdering in Tehran the leader of Hamas killing in Beirut a top official of uh, Hezbollah. This appears to be a fulfillment of what Netanyahu promised the U.S. Congress of total war against Iran. Now, this brings to mind the what used to be called the breakaway ally scenario, which is that Israel has already exhausted its armed forces with the fighting in Gaza against Hamas. Hezbollah is by far a superior military threat to Israel. A stronger army, uh, huge inventory of missiles and so on, uh, which can overwhelm the Iron Dome. Now, the great breakaway ally scenario goes back to Kissinger and Wolfowitz. And the idea is that Israel will launch a strike, launch a war, but not be prepared to carry out the full fighting on its own and will force the United States to have to come in to bail out Israel. Now, there was no serious pushback against Netanyahu in his comments when he spoke to the U.S. Congress. Will there be a clear statement now, or will the U.S. say we have to stick with our ally Israel, no matter what else? Now, if we stay with this policy, we're going to be, as they say, sleepwalking into World War III. There's no way you can continue to expand the, the killing and fighting, including in Gaza, especially now that the negotiator for the ceasefire has been murdered. There's no way you can sustain this without moving into a more aggressive Israeli assault, which would bring in the United States. Is this what the American people want? This should be a topic for the election campaign, not whether the Republicans are weird or whether Harris is a leftist. How about are we going to end up in World War III? Who's going to step forward to stop that? What leaders do we have in the United States who will insist on a diplomatic resolution to these conflicts as opposed to a step-by-step -step escalation to World War III? That should be the discussion topic of the U.S. presidential election. Now, I'm going to be discussing this today with Helga Zepp-LaRouche in our weekly webcast dialogue. It's live at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, or you can pick it up later, archived at theschillerinstitute.com. If you have questions or comments for her, you can send them to me, uh, harleysch at gmail.com or to questions at schillerinstitute.org. And both of those email addresses will be in the description box. But here's your chance to participate in the discussion and to make sure we wake up Americans so that we're not sleepwalking this August into World War III. There's a reason that world wars often begin in August, which is that not only is the, the usual sleepwalking and brainwashing taking an effect, but the vacation, the lure of vacation, of getting away from it all, 
leaves nations unprepared. And that's what people like Netanyahu and Zelensky are counting on. So don't be asleep. Join my discussion today with Helga Zeppler-Rusch and spread this uh, video, share it, make sure our ideas are getting uh, injected into what otherwise is an insane presidential election in the United States. The big question, what can we do about it? If we have the power to influence the course of history as individuals, then each of us has a corresponding moral responsibility to muster for within ourselves those capacities which enable us to do our part in shaping the course of civilization. Now, under that rubric, I say, what kind of news is newsworthy? The only news that's worth having is news which performs those functions, which enables governments, which enables you as an individual and so forth, better to understand what is happening to this planet, to understand what the developments are that are shaping the course of history, and finally to indicate to you the facts which you need to look at so that you can judge what it is that you might be able to do which can contribute to bringing about a solution, an escape from the collapse of civilization. This is no pipe dream, this is no fantasy, this is real.